So, hi everyone, my name is Phil Baldwin. I'm one of the European sales managers for Mark Andy. Um, the reason really behind this video call is to chat with some of our co-suppliers and see what they're facing during these times, um, what kind of market feedback they're getting, any challenges they're having. So today I have Dave with me from Sigwork. Sigwork's our co-supplier globally on inks. Um, in St. Louis demo room, they currently use the Orbis range and over here in Europe, it's a bit more market orientated. So we use the Secura low migration range. So Dave, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, Phil. Uh, Dave Heiser at Sigwork. Uh, yeah, I run the uh, BU uh, narrow web inks for USA and Canada, and then also have global responsibility for our, our narrow web business. Um, yeah, I've been with Sigwork for, for 10 years, and thanks for the opportunity for this uh, quick interview. Great. Well, um, thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, so before we start on the topics, a bit lightheartedness, um, if you could change anything with a bit of hindsight, what would you have done differently before lockdown? I, I, I think like a, a lot of people, um, I, I would have liked to have liquidated my, uh, my portfolio for sure. Um, maybe there's one or two lucky people out there. I don't know. And uh, and yeah, I, I, I miss out on a vacation. So it would have been nice if 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 the whole if the whole COVID thing had moved out a few weeks. Um, wasn't yes. wasn't convenient from that perspective. Well, I, I think similar to you, I, I probably would have sold everything I owned um, and just bought tons of shares in Zoom. Now maybe <laughs> maybe I would have been having this video call from the Caribbean. Yeah. But, um, so. How since this virus has started, how from a personal level has your routine changed or how have you had to adapt to business? Yeah, and maybe a little bit like you, Phil. Um, you know, I, I, I live in Minneapolis and uh, uh, my office is in North Carolina. And of course, there's there's customer things and global things. So I, I'm gone outside of vacations. I'm, I'm gone Monday through Thursday, at least every week. So um, being at home you know, uh, I guess now for what, maybe eight weeks um, is, is dramatically different for me from a work perspective and, and certainly for, for, my, for my wife. So yeah, and, and then just getting, uh, just getting used to um, dealing with, uh, you know, customers and coworkers in this sort of environment um, instead of face-to-face. -face. So um, getting more used to it, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, well, for me, I'm very similar. I'm, I'm used to being away about 45 weeks of the year, um, complaining about delayed flights and missed connections. And, but I, at the moment now, I'm never going to complain again about a delayed flight, a missed connection, anything, anything to go on a plane. Right. So, uh, um, now as businesses, we're all facing new challenges. I guess being an ink supplier, I guess one of the main challenges for you is supply of pigments or chemicals. How, how are you managing to avoid any um, hiccups within your supply chain? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's been a, a, a constant discussion, uh, certainly over the last two months. But um, you know, on on that particular topic for us, it started at the end of the year. You know, when the when the China thing um, uh, started in Wuhan, um, you know, we we got we got orders in to our Chinese suppliers before the end of the year, just in case. So um, yeah, at, at the time there was a question of whether or not we were overreacting and um, it turned out to be absolutely the right move. And, and of course now for the last, what, two months, it's been an India thing. And, 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 and for us, you know, being primarily a UV ink supplier, um, you know, China you know, basically owns the market in, in photo initiators and, and, and India is um, a primary source of certain pigments. So, um, yeah, long, long story short, it's been a, a daily, certainly weekly monitoring of activities. Um, we are secure now. We're secure through July. And, and if you could tell me when, um, when India is, you know, 100% back online, I could give I could give assurance to uh, all our customers, but we're in good shape. We're in good shape so far, and we we think we're going to be okay. Okay, oh, that that's positive feedback there. Um, obviously, ourselves we we have a lot of ink demand for our digital machines. Um, we managed we did a similar thing, put in large orders at the start of this, 
Um, and then we're, we're also having deliveries via sea freight and air freight due to right. the limited number of air freight and the cost of sea freight has gone up. But so far, we've managed to maintain a, a level pricing and meet up with demand. So that's good. Um, obviously, speaking of converters, you know, we, we get positive market feedback, uh, good look for the future. How are your customers responding to you? Is it positive still? Yeah, um, it, it, it's been positive for a while. Um, you know, I, I would have said if, if we were having this interview, let's say end of February or something like that, and you asked the same question, the customers I've talked to um, were, were optimistic. Uh, they had started to see, let's call it the order books, increasing in 2020, better than 2019, which I would have said was an average average market year. Um, so so that was that was optimistic. And then, of course, for the last two months, uh, everyone's been crazy. Um, and, and you know, even, even if we could go see customers and work on projects, I think it would be difficult to get any of their time. Their order books are completely full. Everything that we experience with no product on, on the grocery store shelves, as an example, is because, you know, it, it affects, you know, us downstream, um, our customers, and then ourselves. We've seen... Um, We've, we've seen our sales in both March and April uh, 20% up. Now, this isn't going to last. Um, yeah. It's very nice, but it's not going to last. Um, and but, but I have heard a couple customers talk in terms of they think it's liable to be maybe plus 10% for the next six months or so. And, and I think one of the, you know, uh, bets people might be, laying is you know what 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 is retained what behaviors what consumer behaviors retain post-covid you know in other words you know does the restaurant business die off and more people staying at home and therefore consuming more grocery items so you know it's that sort of thinking but you know to basically to your question people are optimistic so so far and and are you know we're in the right business i must say yeah, I, I fully agree. I think print, whenever there's a recession, people stay at home, so there's more demand for packaging. So it's, you know, a recession is never good, but for the print market, it's always quite buoyant. We're seeing continued sales. Um, so yeah, it's it's looking, same thing in Europe, quite a positive outlook for the future. Um, so la last question really for you is, Moving forward, when life returns to normal, I, I think it'll be a new normal. There will be changes, but what do you think you would take from this? Um, different ways of working. How how would you see more video conference calling? Or yeah, um, it, 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 I'll touch on a couple different topics. You know, the the employee safety thing has been um, you know really at the forefront of some of the changes that we've made internally, and 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 you guys and everybody else, obviously. Um, you know, since we've been staying open the entire time, you know, you know, we've made shift arrangements and and people aren't working in the office. And and I, I guess one of the things that, you know, we are we are learning, I'm learning is that um, uh, certain certain functions in the company where I might have said to you a few months ago, absolutely positively needed to occur in the office where we're learning. No, they don't, you know. Um, are, are, are some things more effective in a face-to-face -face environment? Of course they are, but not all the time. So one of the things that I believe will get retained is um, we'll increase flexible work environments. As we transition, and we're starting, we're starting to plan for that transition back, you know, as states start to reopen, as they say, we're starting the planning process. We don't have a date yet, and but we know it's going to be transition, and therefore, um, I think we'll retain some of the employer flex, employee flexibility, you know, you know, work at home, work in the office type thing. I think it's good for the employee, and it'll be good for 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 us going forward. Certain safety and hygiene topics uh, will become part of our routine. I think for sure um, there there will be more of what we're doing right now. Um, but I and on that topic, I really do believe that, um, you know, hopefully, you know, when the virus is 100 percent behind us and people are very comfortable, I think that 
I think people will rebound to their normal ways. I think the the airlines will be full again, the hotels will be full again, um, and 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 people that had a bias towards working face to face will go back to that fully. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think the office as we know it is is going to change moving forward. There'll be a lot more home office, but from the sales cycle, um, I say when things everything is back to a, a safe level possibly end of the year, maybe even into 2021. But I think the sales side will return to face to face because it's great having face to face over the Internet, but you can't share a beer over the Internet. So right, right. I think that's one of the things that will change back um, from our side. Something we've learned and will probably stay in place or, or it will be useful to have in place is remote training, remote installations. So we found the ability to be able to help and support the customers via um things like zoom or facetime or or similar apps so i think there'll be a growth in that in remote support but for the sales side it's uh it's going to go back to how it was i believe so yeah and i agree with you on, on that remote remote support you know um you know th there's always more demand for for on-site support than we generally have the, the people and the capability and th and things probably the same as you you know they come up at last minute and if you can leverage technology like this to to provide some of that support yeah i think that's a win-win for for everyone great fantastic well dave i won't take up any more of your time so thank you for uh sharing your time to speak with us and well for us in the uk it's a long weekend so i'll, I'll say good weekend to you now all right thanks for the opportunity phil appreciate it thank you very much dave Thank you.